Right. Uh, it's already five o'clock, so shall we start? Absolutely. Okay, I, I am seeing some estimations here, but before we do that, I'd like to welcome you all to another edition of Matt's Extravaganza. Um, is everyone excited to see what are the activities that are lined up today? Yeah, I can see many yeses. Right, before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Eileen and I am the Education Success Partner for UAE Schools. And I am your co-host for today's Extravaganza. Um, without further ado, I, I'd like to pass the floor, to give the floor on to Fiona, who is going to be our main host uh, for today's Extravaganza. Over to you, Fiona. Thank you so much, Eileen. Well, welcome everyone. I am so excited. We have got so much packed into the next 40 minutes, roughly, okay? Now, we're changing it to how we've done it previously. So we want you to engage with us. We want you to put lots of answers in the chat, but this time, just so it doesn't get so overwhelming, only we can see your answers. So uh, you won't be able to see each other's, which just makes it a bit more exciting because then we can reveal what other people are putting. So that's how the chat's going to work today. And, um, Everything that we're doing in this session will come out in a handout afterwards by email tomorrow. So you'll be able to then have a go at all these lovely activities. So don't worry if you're trying to do some of the things you're thinking, I haven't got enough time. It doesn't matter because you'll have all the activities all ready for you so you can have a go in your own time. So how did you find this activity? Was it tricky? Trying yes. to guess. <laughs> Oh, yes, really? Really, oh my gosh. Really tricky. I didn't expect that we that a, a tree can have that many leaves. Like some of them are saying, oh, Ahmed was just saying there are 25 leaves on the tree. I think that's very <laughs> I think that's a dying tree. Uh the polar bears. Um oh, that's you answer that. Um Jyoti Jangla said there are 1,000 feathers in an African parrot. And what's the actual answer to that? They could have at least 8,000 feathers. That's a lot, isn't it? It's an awful lot, yes. Yeah. And uh, Sandus also said the, ver uh, the bee can uh, fly 230 times. That's very close to the yeah. correct answer because okay. the correct answer is 200 times a second. You're very close to that, Sandus. well done. And uh, someone is saying, she vans. It's actually live, leaves on the tree are infinite. I think, I think it depends on the, on the tree as well, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, and the age of the tree, I think, and absolutely. the size of the tree. Yeah. And, and I think it depends because if you live in the UK, like I do, we have autumn and the, most trees lose all their leaves ready for the spring when they all come back again so i guess it depends where you are in the world as well maybe <laughs> okay that, that may be a place of the answer of uh, po uh polson there's 25 25 leaves in a tree <laughs> what about stripes on a tiger has anyone put that answer in i know yet? it's ahmed sorry it's ahmed. anybody put stripes on a tiger yeah can Ooh. can can anyone guess how many stripes are there? I can see hundreds coming through. 300, 100, 100 200. 200. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're busy counting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 30 stripes from Tehila, but I think the one who got it correctly is uh, Sayeda, Sayeda Raza. Well done, yeah. Sayeda. 100, great. 100. I mean, this, this, the great thing about this is they're all estimates. You know, they're all approximate. So, you know, some of you have got fairly close and it doesn't matter if it's not exact. What about polar bears left? This is really sad, isn't it? Because of our world and everything changing with the climate and things, a lot of the polar bears are finding there's less ice. So we are losing quite a lot. So anyone know how many are left? People, do you know what? I put 100,000, but that was a wrong answer. So I was just uh, having a go. Um, <laughs> Let's see, anyone else got some money, any ideas? They're big numbers, they are big numbers we're dealing with. So, so I was saying if there's more than a hundred, it is in the thousands, it is in the thousands, I'll give you a clue. 
Oh, yeah. 60,000, okay. Anyone else? Lower. Yeah. Oh, there's, an, there's one who is very close. Um, Shalini said 20,000, but there's one who actually got a very good estimation. It's Carmen again. Carmen Paulson said 26,000. I wonder if someone's Googling. <laughs> <laughs> well done, brilliant. Some brilliant estimates. What about the, I think there's one, there's a few left. What about the eggs that the female um, turtle lays? Yeah. I think someone just put, oh, I'm pretty sure 110 I saw just now, someone put, oh, there we go, it's come up again. 110, 110 eggs. eggs. It's from Quincy and from, uh, it's from Quincy and Nasser has guessed it uh, very close. He said 100. Do you know, it sounds quite a lot of eggs as well, doesn't it? That the, the female turtle lays um, and that's, they sometimes can lay nests up to two to eight times a year. So they're laying a hundred plus eggs each time. That's a lot of turtles. But I don't know if you've ever seen that um, there is a documentary that shows you that the turtles come out of the sea to lay their eggs up the beach in the sand. And then when the eggs hatch, the turtles, the little tiny turtles that have just hatched, have to make that big long journey from their nest back to the sea. And of course, as nature would have it, some either lose their way or get yeah. eaten or yeah. even drown depending on the weather with the, with the sea. So I think that's why the female turtle lays so many eggs because they know not all of them are going to survive. So brilliant. Loving all these answers coming through. Is there any we've missed out, Eileen? Uh, someone answered icebergs. I think we haven't asked about icebergs. Ah, right, okay. Uh, icebergs, uh, Chanel de Sosa said it's 1000 years old. Yeah, and do you know, when I was looking for this answer, because ice is always forming and moving because you have the glaciers, it's really hard to tell actually how old they are. But yeah. some are saying they can be up to 10,000 years old. So that's a long time. We've got yeah, some 10,000 coming time. through. Yeah, great. Well, there's a reason why I'm showing you all of this today because I'm just gonna click to the next slide so I can show you. There we go. So we've actually got a summer challenge this year and hopefully you've already seen it. If not, you can go and download it. And it's all about building for a greener future because you, you probably all heard on the news, you know, the way in which we're all behaving as humans, um, sometimes we're not always thinking what's best actually for our environment, you know, for, for all of our nature, for all of, you know, our trees, everything around us. And if we're not careful, we're actually damaging it. And what is happening is we're having this climate change and things are starting to heat up. Yeah. And they do estimate that in about the year 2100, so if we're at 2022 at the moment, how many years time is that? I wonder if any of you can quickly do some mathematics for yeah. me. Um, but anyway, whilst you do that, I'll just say, uh, they, they think that maybe 50% of all other world species could go extinct. So that's really sad if we don't do something now. So that's why we're actually wanting to make you all aware of all the things that we can do and to help our, our climate really, and to help our environment. I'm all oh, 78 years old, 78, well done. Yeah. How old will you guys be in 78 <laughs> years time? I know what. <laughs> I will be very, very old. I won't be here. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, please have a look out. There, we've got eight mini projects all to do with your environment, just to make you more aware and maybe start thinking about some things that you might be able to do to help just to try and stop the climate rising um, so dramatically that could cause all of these horrible things. So Anyway, now we're going to get on with some fun. So let's move. <laughs> Leila is saying she is going to be 89 years old by 2100. Wow, gosh, brilliant. <laughs> some good maths going on here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have got such a wonderful world. We really have. And there is so much mathematics in our natural world. There are all sorts of shapes and mathematics that's going on. And... I've got on the screen now some pictures for you. Now, all of these 
are natural. Nothing is man-made, what you can see there now. And I want you just to have a look. I don't know if you can see, they're numbered. Uh, across the top, it goes one, four, seven, ten. Then the next line is two, five, eight, eleven. And then the bottom row is three, six, nine, and twelve. Now, just pick a picture. So, for example, I might pick picture one. Got to name the shape. So what shape can you see? And I can see people already coming through with hexagon. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And what do you think that shape is part of? Yeah. Who can guess that? The uh, hexagon. B, a B beehive, <laughs> right, yeah. Now, I've just had Funny someone cold. say that my, um, that my voice is lagging. Is it lagging for you, Eileen? No, it's, it's good. Um, earlier it was lagging, but now it's good. It's uh, good now. Oh, okay, good. Right, you're absolutely right. So number one, it's a hexagon and it's honeycomb. So let's put some more in the chat then. Choose a number. Tell us the name of the shape and tell us where you think it comes from. I'll give you a few, just a few minutes just to have a go at that. Mm. Okay. Let's have a go. For me, oh, there's one for Carmen, number 10. She says it seeds. Where is number 10? Oh, that's a sunflower. She says it's seeds. And what's the shape that you can see on the sunflower, Carmen? Yeah. The circle coming through from some other people. Yeah. Uh, number six, circle wood log. Number six. Okay. And what is the shape that you can see from the wood log? Uh, Shivansh. Number. So many answers are coming in. I know, I know. <laughs> Arisha uh, said number seven is circle. Number seven is circle. Do you know what? It's actually, it's probably, it, it is going in a circular spiral shape and it's actually part of a cabbage. It's a cabbage yeah. that's been chopped. <laughs> in yeah, heart. exactly. Yeah, the, uh, the purple cabbage. Yeah. Yeah. And I did see earlier someone put number two and I think they put a hexagon. But it's a bit of an irregular polygon, really. Um, then, yeah, it's not a true hexagon. A reg yeah, but they've put a giraffe. You're absolutely okay. right. Yeah, um, they put a giraffe. Uh, Chanel said it's a pentagon. Pentagon? Oh, well, we'll just say irregular. <laughs> irregular irregular polygon, polygon. Yeah. <laughs> Number five. Now, number five is interesting because that's a giant causeway, which is over in um, Northern Ireland or, or part of Ireland anyway. Um, it's called the Giant's Causeway. And you're absolutely right. I don't know, I can see pentagons and hexagons in there. Actually, I think it's hexagons mainly in there. Yeah. Oh. And they're saying it's from a mountain. Some uh, Shivans said it's hexagon rocks. Tehila said mountain. So it's actually a causeway, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's from years and years ago. And once again, it's to do with Ice Age and how it's all just formed. Because um, it looks like someone's just laid lots of paving slabs, doesn't it? But it's actually how the rocks have, have formed. So, and I did see number yeah, seven, number nine. Some people were recognizing number nine, which they said was a pineapple. Yeah, pineapple. Yeah. yeah. And what is that shape? It's a pineapple, yes. And what is that shape? Can someone guess that? Pineapple. It's actually a... You it's could a say it's a semicircle, couldn't you? It could be... Um, oval. The healer said oval. oval. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, somebody said half circle. Shalini said half circle. Half circle, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Somebody said oval. The healer again. And I've said number three, people saying yes. that's a snake skin. Skin, yeah. And they're saying it's hexagon. Yeah. It's uh, interesting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Lots yeah. of amazing shapes. And you know, next time you go on a walk, just have a look. See if you can spot some of nature's shapes around you. It's really interesting when you start to really look at what you can see. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we're going to move on. So... 
Now we're talking about shapes. I've got four shapes in front of me now. I just want to check we know the names of these shapes. So let's start with the yellow shape. What do you think that's called? I think we've just been talking about it quite a lot. Yeah, uh, uh, when they were guessing the, the images that they see. Oh, a lot are saying it's hexagon, hexagon. Someone okay, said Okay, let's octagon. do the magic, ma magic reveal. You're right, it yeah, is a hexagon. Yeah. Well done. Okay, what about the blue shape? The blue shape. Ooh. <laughs> we're waiting for your answers. Somebody oh. said quadrilateral. Now it is a square, but it's a square that someone's pushed. So yeah, they said it's rhombus. Yeah. It is <laughs> Chanel rhombus. said it's slanted square. Can we accept that? Slanted <laughs> <No>. square. <laughs> no. Rhombus is correct. A parallelogram, two of the opposite sides would have to be longer. A parallelogram is a rectangle that someone's been pushed. So um, yeah. yeah, okay, brilliant. So what about the red shape? Sima said it's trapezium, red color. Gila <laughs> said trapezium as well. There and we go. Nasser <laughs> is saying trapezoid. Have you, have you? Maybe, maybe he meant trapezoid. That's, um, that's the American way yeah, of saying yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. It's trapezium or trapezoid. Absolutely. Okay, what about the last one, the green? Now, you're all putting triangle, triangle, triangle. That's all coming flooding in. But it's a special sort of triangle. Do you know the name of it? Oh. A green triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone know? I know it's a triangle, but it's got a, it's not a triangle prism. It's not a right angle. There's no right angles in there. You look at it, all of the sides are the same length. All of the angles are the same. Oh. Carmen said pre-run. No. Equal oh, this triangle. Run. <laughs> An equal triangle, you are almost there. You are all equal. Uh, Faisa <laughs> said equilateral. <laughs> equal triangle. <laughs> Absolutely. Right now. So now I want you to have a look at those four shapes. And there isn't and it right answer here. So there's lots of answers. So I want you to come up with one. Choose one of those shapes and tell me, because you're choosing it because it's the odd one out. So I'm going to say, I'm going to start it off. I'm going to say hexagon is the odd one out because it has six sides and none of the other shapes have six sides. So uh, now it's Arisha like here. Arisha here said hexagon because uh, it's biggest and has more sides. Okay, so now think, have we got any others? Think of another shape. Choose why it's, why is it the odd one out? Have a choose, what do you think? Rhombus, someone's put rhombus, yeah. okay? Why is the rhombus yeah. the odd one out? Have I think, think it's rhombus is the uh, odd one out because it can't form a hexagon. <laughs> when, you, when you put them together, you can't form a hexagon. Okay, a triangle because it's a basic shape. Come on, we can think of a different one for a triangle. Let's try and get some mathematical thinking going on here. Okay, uh, trapezium because it has five sides and others have four. Right, uh -huh. okay, yeah. As irregular sides, it's got, I think what you probably mean by that, it's got one set of parallel sides. And I guess the other sides go, go at different angles, don't they? So yeah, you're absolutely right with that comment. A triangle because it has the lowest number of sides, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh... Oh, I like that one, a triangle because it has less than four angles. That's a good one, I like it. That's a good one from Nasser, okay. Um, trapezium because it's not a quadri quadrilateral from Safa Mehbu. What do you think about that? Well, a trapezium is a quadrilateral because a quadrilateral or quadrilateral has four sides, doesn't it? And the trapezium's got four yeah. sides. So yeah. not quite that one. Uh, trapezium, because it has no equal sides and also it looks weird 
<laughs> from <Ooh>. summer. <laughs> but if you think about that, you've got the two parallel sides here, but the ones that go this side are equal in length. So that's another interesting fact. Okay, right. Well, I'm going to just move on because we've been talking about angles and I just want to show you something and I'm just going to make sure I go the right way. There we go. So I've got here now you've got a link to this when you get the handout, you've got a link to this. Um, and this is brilliant because I've got what's called a protractor here. If I move that around, it can tell me the size of the angles. Now we've just been talking about the angles. So do we know, with a hexagon, do we know the size of the angles in a hexagon? So if I... Come on, you, give us a... Oh, we know yes. it's more, ooh, ooh, more ooh. than 90. Yeah. What's it going to be? Whoop. Right, so each one of those angles that we've got here is 120 degrees. Right, now that we know that, I'm going to show you something. If I move that onto there, okay, just give you a little clue. So what do you think the angle, hang on, get it right, this angle here is going to be? Oh ah, Somebody some said that's an obtuse angle. <laughs> an obtuse angle, yeah. 60, why 60? Because you are absolutely right. And the reason I showed you is because it's half of the... 120. Okay, so if that is 60, let me move this round so we can get this angle. What's this angle going to be then? This angle here, let me move it back round, have a think about it. Oh, it's gone, gone beyond your guesses. <laughs> It is in fact 120. Okay, so correctly. So hexagon is they're all 120. Trapezium, the let me spin it back round so it looks more like your trapezium. The acute angles are 60, the obtuse angles are both 120. So what about our rhombus? What do you think the angles are going to be here? What do you think? Oh, okay. <laughs> it is. It's, move it. It is. Oh, it's going to be 120, I think. 20. So if that's 120, what's the other angle going to be in the rhombus? Are we starting to see the connection now? <laughs> yeah. It's going to be. It's very obvious now. Oh, yeah. uh, some oh. of them are saying 60. And, and I can't, oh, I'm losing control of the mouse here. Oh, oh. you're absolutely right. It is uh, oh, 60. 60. Yeah. Right, okay, so that's interesting. Well done. So we've got left our equilateral triangle. What do we think the three angles are going to be in there? Any guesses? Put your guesses on the chat. Seven or 60. Right. 60. So just said 60. 60. Good. So the angles then in these four shapes have all got something in common. They're either 60 or 120. And that means because they're like that, we're able to play this next game. So let's go to the next slide. I'm sure, I'm sure I've not jumped ahead yet. We're going to play a game called Last Shape In Wins. Okay, so I'm going to go over to our play board now. Okay. I can't remember, are you explaining the rules or am I? <laughs> Is it me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we've got this, we've got this rhombus, you can see. I know it does look like a diamond as well, but it's a rhombus. And we're going to take it in turn. So it's going to be Eileen's going to start, and then it's going to be my turn. And we just place, we can choose any of these four shapes that we've just been talking about, and we can place them so they fit within our rhombus. Now, the only rule is when it's your turn, your shape must be touching another shape. Ooh, and I the know. last person to put the shape in that completes the rhombus is the winner. 
Okay. okay, right. Are you ready for this, Eileen? Yeah, I need a team for this. Who's going to be with me? I'm going to be team yellow. Who's got, team oh, yellow. I'm oh, brilliant. Go, yeah, brilliant. I, have, I, have, I have teammates with me now. Okay, okay. let's go. I'm, I'm going to be team green then. All right, we'll see. We'll see how this Who's goes. Who's going back. to be with Fiona? Who's going to be with team green? Oh, are you oh sure? I've got okay. team green. Brilliant. Right, right. Because, okay. Because I said yellow, I'm going to start with yellow. Okay. okay. Oops. Ooh, where do I put that? I think it will fit here. Yes. Yes, it fits. It's your but, turn, Fiona. Okay. Well, <laughs> I know I'm team green, but I'm going to. Oh, you're going, going to put yellow as Yeah, well. and I've got to make sure it touches. So actually, if I'm going to choose this big hexagon, it's going to have to go uh, there. Yeah, right. touch okay. my... Okay. Um, I still have a lot of options, so I'll go with um, triangle. It's green, but I'm still yellow. I'm going to put that <laughs> here. Yes. Oops. Oh. Okay. Right. So uh, I'm still touching. Still okay, touching. your turn. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go with a trapezium and I'm going to place it there. I'm trying to use up more than one. There we go. Oh, okay. Now I have to figure out which shape goes next. Can you help me, my teammates? I think I'm going to get yellow again. I'll put that here below yours. Yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Your turn. Well, I'm going to continue with the trapezium and I'm just going to complete that there because that will fit nicely in there. There we go. Now, I wonder, when you're looking at this now, I think if we start to think ahead carefully, Eileen, we might be able to work out how to win this. Bit of, mm -hmm. bit of strategy. Hmm. What are you going to go for? Okay, someone says trapezium. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go with that one. I think I'm going to take this shape. Let me see. Put that here, yes. It's in nicely. Thank you, Muhammad. I, I got help from Muhammad, from Zian, from Sayeda. Thanks to all of you. <laughs> Team Green now. Right, now I need to play really carefully here because if I move yes. a trapezium and place it in here, you win because you'll place a green one there. So mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. So if I place a triangle there, once again, you could place a trapezium in and win there. And I want to win this. I could just do a single triangle there and I could try and work out if I could win that triangle. Oh, but you know what? I'm gonna use a rhombus because we've not used a rhombus yet. And I'm gonna place a rhombus there. Oh, I think hey. it's very clear it's going to be a How <laughs> do you think we'll win? Oh, somebody said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on, let's do yeah, the final yeah, I'm move. Shall we yeah. do the final moves? Let's yeah. do the final ones. Let's do the final move. I'll put you can choose whichever here. place you want your triangle to go in. <laughs> That's it. Oh, right. and then <laughs> green team, thanks for all your help. There we go. Brilliant. So, so what really is the strategy here to win? The strategy is to win, but you also have to be quite clever. You need to think maybe a few moves ahead, looking at the shapes that you've oh, got and the space that you've got left. I also don't know if it makes a difference if you because you went first didn't you yeah so I don't know if that means because I'm following you it means I can dictate it a bit more who moves where I don't know so I don't know if it's better to start first or is it better to start second 
So lots of different, you know. Now this is in, in the pack that we spoke about, so you can have a go and play this yourself. Um, they are actually the shape. I don't know if you've heard of them. You may have them in school. They're called pattern blocks. So if you do happen to have some of those, you can play it um, with the actual blocks as well, which would be good. Yeah. Okay, right. So let's- That's a nice one. I want to repeat it, but we're running out of time. I want to I win. <laughs> <laughs> Another time, yeah. yeah. Now, when we were placing all of those shapes together, they were all fitting together exactly with no gaps, no overlapping. And it's the same with the shapes that you can see on the screen now. We've got some man-made sort of um, tiles, um, block paving, but we've also got some, some actual just shapes drawn as well, but they are all fitting together exactly made, making a pattern. Does anybody know what that's called? It's got a special name. Someone says an illusion. illusion. I'll, move, I'll move on because I've got some more to show you here. And it actually gives you it away. A mosaic's a good word as well. Patterns are a good word. They're actually called tessellations. And they're created, as it says on the screen, when the shapes are repeated again and again with no gaps and no overlapping. Now, there's some real, if we look at the middle one at the top, that's just hexagons, just all fitting together mm -hmm. nicely. But if we look on the other side here, we can see squares and triangles tessellating. And then this becomes some very pretty tile mosaic patterns with tessellations as well happening. And then we've got some really strange ones because it's not actual shapes I can see, it's objects. And if I look at this top one, yep. I can see <laughs> lots and lots of cats. But can you see any other animals in there? Mm, what is the other animal there? <laughs> Ahmad said it's a dog. Yeah, dogs. It's a I'm mouse. Sure. Arisha said it's a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Collins really clever, dogs. isn't it? How they've managed to tessellate. They've thought yeah. really carefully about how to do that. And then the yeah. one below as well. I don't know if you can notice there, Eileen. Do you notice what yeah. motive is there? It looks butterfly to me or yeah. ribbons. No, I think it's more of butterfly. Butterflies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And they're saying butterfly too. Yeah. Now, obviously these are irregular tessellations um, because irregular shapes are used to make them. Whereas these are obviously just irregular tessellations. Now, there is an artist called Escher and you can certainly Google him after our session today. And he did a lot of artwork all to do with those irregular shapes. And once again, can you see all the different images inside and they all fit together? I mean, I've got fish and frog I can see and I can see one with fish and I don't know if that's like a, a chameleon or something like that and the other one. So they're lots of different, different shapes. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I showed you how we can tessellate with some irregular shapes, okay? So I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. So let me stop sharing the screen, stop share. Okay, and I'm going to now move my laptop. Sure. And I'm going to go, oh, very good. This is an exciting activity. It is, yeah, right. I'm going to do a, an actual tessellation. Yeah, I'm sorry, I've just got my, that's, that's, there we go. So hopefully, yes, you can see my hand. Yeah, you can, right. see, you can see. So what you need to do this is a square piece of paper, be, any size, but having it quite small so you can fit it on a bigger piece of paper is good. You need a pencil, you need some scissors, and you need some sellotape, and then a bigger piece of paper. And what you do, I'll show you step by step, is you get your piece of paper, and I'm gonna do it in pen, so hopefully you can see it more easily. And you can just draw any shape, any shape, just do a wiggly pattern, it's entirely up to you. But what's really important is you must go from one corner back to this corner, okay? So there's, it's along the same side. Now, now that I've done that, I'm gonna get my scissors, and I'm going to just cut out very carefully. Now, if you are, are younger- I can't see it. Oh, sorry, see it, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah. If you're younger, you might want 
an adult to help you with the cutting. But if not, have a go yourself. Oops, sorry, make sure I keep it in. So I've just cut that very carefully, making sure I've gone from corner to corner, okay? Now, that fits in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna move it, just move it down to here. And I'm going to put it on the end there. And I'm gonna get my sellotape. And I'm just going to sellotape that there. Simple as that. Okay? Wow, okay. And now I'm just going to do exactly the same because I wanna make it a really interesting shape. So I'm going to draw another one. Once again, I've gone from corner to corner, okay? It's really important, this shape I cut here, I have to stick on the opposite side. So the same with this one, when I cut this out, I've got to stick it on the opposite side. So now let me cut this, or can you see, sorry, make sure I'm looking at my camera. There we go, cutting it out. Oh. To the end there. Now I need to, once again, that shape fitted there. So I'm going to move it to there, get my sellotape. And all oh, very, very carefully, try and be an exact, oh, I've got a wiggly finger. Right, let's do that. Again. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. There we go. So there we have it. So I've got quite an interesting shape at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get my, my paper and I am going to, let's have a think about this. Uh, what can I see? I'm just looking to see what I can see. Ah, I know I can see something quite interesting here. So, yeah, can you guess what should, what Fiona is doing? Is is she going to make a flower or an animal or a shape? Uh, if I draw around with my pen, drawing around very carefully. There we go. I'll just do a couple of these. I'm not going to do loads because it's not going to be that interesting watching me just draw around. So now I've drawn that. Can you see this now slots in to there and I'm starting to tessellate. So I can now oh. draw around again. So I'm doing it quickly. I'll take more time than me and do it much more neatly, but there we go. And then you'll see, actually I can fit that. It's there so I can tessellate but move it in so you can see yeah you can see I'm starting to build a bit like Escher with his artwork that I just showed you I'm starting to build my own irregular tessellation and that fits in there yeah. and you see and I start to draw start to draw around that right I'm going to stop there because what I'm going to do is I'm thinking well what does that look like and do you know what I can see I can see something quite fierce. So I'm going to, can you see me drawing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. They're saying you're, you're making a stingray, a flower, leaves. Oh, <laughs> what does it look like now? Let's get some of that in. Oh, see frog. Oh, oh. you nice. If I turn it around. <laughs> I've just made a wolf, I guess. And if wolf, I yeah, Hamad said it's a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and if I show you, I, because I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of time to do this, I've actually done one earlier that you can see when I put them all together. So you can oh, do it. Nice. It's, it's really clever because you it's up to you. You make this irregular shape, it will tessellate. And then you can make it into whatever you want to make it in. So yeah, yeah you can. Somebody says they can make it as a dragon, a unicorn. <laughs> Absolutely. So Fox. lots of fun. Lots of fun. Right. Okay. I'm just going to now share my screen again, and then we can um, uh, share screen. There we go. Right. And we can just finish off. So. Brilliant. So I hope you enjoyed that because it really is good fun. And I do like a bit of artwork. So if you like some art as well, um, but if you like the maths, trying to work out how it all fits together, you know, you've got that mm -hmm. joy as well. 
Okay, so let's just move on then to our, oh, there we are. That's a picture of me just showing you. Oh, we've run out of time, which is a real yeah, shame. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's very quick. Time passes by when you're enjoying. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed the activities because we love doing the activities with you and we love all of your chat. It's been brilliant just seeing all of your ideas and, and solutions. So thank you for that. Okay, so we're on the last bit of our um, uh, extravaganza and here you will see the summer challenge. Some of you might have already have it and for those who haven't yet, watch out for your teachers to share that in your announcement board or platform because they're going to share that uh, around the school. And uh, share, uh, send us your works, a picture of your work and uh, anyone who will have the best one will be uh, published in our social media. Yeah. Brilliant. So that's it. Right, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And I'm sure we're going to do some more of these this year. So look out and hopefully we will um, get you to join us again for another math extravaganza. So thank you so much thank and so have much. a really good evening. Thank yeah. you. Enjoy your evening. I'm going to practice my tessellations now. How are you? <laughs> yeah. Bye everyone, you know take care. Please, please get in touch and share. If you do do some of these tessellations, then um, email us and it'd be lovely to, um, to see them. So thank you. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.